Hey guys, it's Jake Mace with PhoenixLongevityArts.com. It's Fighting Friday, and lately we've been pretty active about giving you guys a lot of training videos uh, that work your body physically, whether it's meditation or workout Wednesdays or kicking videos for Top 10 Tuesdays and all the fighting techniques we've done on Fridays. So today, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a philosophy and a talk. I haven't done a talk for you guys in a while, and I wanted to talk about when it's okay to fight since it's Fighting Friday. And a lot of times I get a lot of emails from people on um, phoenixlongevityarts at gmail.com, but also on Facebook. If you friend me on Facebook, I'll approve your friend request. Uh, look me up, Jake Mace, on Facebook. And you can Twitter me at Kung Fu Universe. That's my Twitter handle, Kung Fu Universe. And I get a lot of questions about fighting, especially from people, it seems, in European countries. A lot of people in Europe talk about how they're kind of being accosted by groups of bullies and there's no martial arts school there so YouTube is their only source of self-defense techniques and training and they want to know how they can defend themselves and kick some ass and uh, this question comes up a lot even in Tempe, Arizona here where I'm located of when it's okay to fight and I've probably had in the history of me teaching since I've been 21 doing this full time I've been teaching full time since I was 21 and before that I was an assistant teacher since I've been uh, 18 and we've had about three people ever fight on the street for real and so normally what I find is that when I'm around martial artists that have been in martial arts for a while they normally don't get in fights while they're training it's something about um, saving themselves for the next class they don't want to lower themselves down to the level of the idiot on the street and so the three people that have fought as a part of my program for real, um, I'll give you some examples. One person said to me that they were in Scottsdale, Arizona, which is a uh, affluent area of the Phoenix area, and they were uh, on a Friday night in their, in their truck with their girlfriend, and they were driving along down in uh, Scottsdale Paradise Valley, and somebody had come by and just completely cut them off at about 11.30 p.m. and blocked their truck at a traffic light and got out of his car and started walking toward my student's truck as if he was going to fight him. And I guess that earlier down the street, this person had cut the other person off and didn't know about it, and now this person was pretty angry. And so he's walking down toward the truck and he's acting like he's gonna fight. And so I asked my student, what did you do? You know, that's pretty crazy because if they have a gun or something and you're stuck in the truck, you know, they could uh, potentially shoot you through the truck. And he said, I know, and that's why I got out and faced him standing up chest to chest. And I'm like, what? <laughs> In the middle of the street? He goes, yeah, a four lane street. He faced him chest to chest. And they started kind of arguing it out. And it looks like the guy was gonna be just more of a road rage type of individual, nothing too harmless. And so my student just turned around and walked back to his truck and when he walked around the guy had a thirst buster and he threw the thirst buster at my student and it broke all over my student's back and coke was all over him and I said oh so did you guys fight then he goes no I just still even though I was full of soda I still went back to my truck and then I said well what happened he goes well when I turned around again um, the guy didn't like how I turned my back on him and he reared back for a punch so I whipped back around quickly and I gave him a number one fighting technique, just a straight jab right in the face. And I said, what? And he said, yeah, I knocked him out on the street and he fell down. And I said, well, what did you do? And he said, I got in the truck and drove away. <laughs> it's so stupid. And so I couldn't believe it. You know, think about the legal ramifications of that situation, you know. My student could have easily stayed in his truck and just backed out and driven past the guy and turned away and gone somewhere else. Um, and if the guy started following him, he could have called 911 and they could have pulled him over during the following chase. But he chose to stand up to the guy. And so right when my student got out of the truck and stood up to the guy, they signed a contract together, figuratively. And the contract was, we must meet in battle. And now we're going to discuss terms. And the discussion of terms was the argument that happened. And so um, I said to him, I said, why didn't you just drive away? And he goes, well, I guess I could have done that. And uh, normally that's the answer is, in hindsight, my students have always said, you know, I probably could have done that. 
And what it boils down to is people sometimes want to just see how good they are. And sometimes they also don't think clearly during a stressful uh, situation. And so I want to ask you guys to put in the comments down below right now, when do you think it's okay to fight? Is there ever a situation or a circumstance when it's okay to fight? Please uh, give me your uh, experience or opinion down below and let's get a discussion going. And if you see somebody in the comments that you agree with or don't agree with, talk with them and respectfully and see if you guys can um, come to some kind of understanding. And what usually happens with my students when they talk about they fought outside of the class, which has happened, like I said, three times that I can remember, uh, they always usually say, you know, I usually just used a jab or a kick to the shin and that was enough to dissolve the situation and I'm so depressed. And I was like, why are you depressed? And they said, well, because I could have done so much more. I trained all these techniques. I could have been a badass. But I settled for a simple, straightforward, easy technique. And I said, that's the reason why we train those simple, easy techniques the most. The other techniques, all the big, flowery, complex, uh, beautiful techniques that we train work and are effective, but those are really designed to overtrain you so that the simple techniques become that much more effective, easier, and more uh, second nature during a stressful situation like a fight is. Somebody else told me that another story was that he was on the light rail train in the Phoenix area and that he was um, actually jumped by three guys and they knocked him out on the light rail and took his wallet. And I said, I can't believe that happened. You know, I ride the light rail all the time. I'm trying to conserve energy and I try to ride my bike and use the light rail. I think that's a great thing the city has. So what happened? You know, they just jumped you? He goes, yeah, it was two in the morning. And I'm like, why are you on the light rail at two in the morning? And he said, well, I had been drinking at a bar. And immediately while he's talking, I'm, I'm shaking my head. Because <laughs> I've been drinking at a bar usually does not end well. And he said that I got on the light rail and these three... Uh, guys on the light rail and I guess that I had been kind of a loud mouth and maybe let out some racial slurs at them And so they kicked my ass in the light rail and I said you didn't get jumped You were an idiot. You got drunk went on a train and became a racist and those guys whooped your ass and You probably <laughs> I don't want to say deserved it But you were totally responsible for that ass kicking not being jumped and so if you could look back on your life and situations that you may have fought in, I bet you all of them, you know, very rarely, and one of the million are actually ones you actually had to fight. And in my opinion, I'll tell you my opinion right now, I would fight using Kung Fu, wrestling, uh, joint manipulation, everything I've learned. You know, I would fight if my life or my family's life was threatened. You know, let's say I'm in bed and somebody breaks into my house and is coming into my bedroom. Um, it's time to fight. You know, or if um, someone is um, got a gun and or a knife and is coming at me, ready to kill me and approaching and not talking, they mean business, they're all action. Maybe it's time to sink down and uh, do your best to survive that situation with a fight. But very rarely does an actual fight on the street, is it ever like that? Normally it's alcohol related. Normally it's girlfriend or boyfriend related. Normally it's traffic related. And I talked about in previous videos about the five parts of life that I believe in. And I think that everybody who's living on the planet right now is trying to become successful and balance these five areas. So one is goals, two is health of the body and the mind, three is uh, money or gaining the funds you need to survive, four is family, and five is relationships. I separate family and relationships because I think that you don't have to have a relationship to have a good family. You can have a family that's beyond a significant other. And so I think we're always trying to balance. You know, maybe if you uh, are getting extremely healthy in your body, then you have no money because you haven't been working or you've been spending too much money on uh, the health uh, items you've been buying. Maybe if you have an amazing family and your kids are just rocking, they're smart and they're confident and they're completely self-sufficient, maybe your body is a wreck as a result of that. Maybe you've been putting too much time into your family and now you've let yourself go. That's usually what happens with people that I train is that they let themselves go in terms of just becoming weak or becoming overweight or becoming too skinny or becoming unhealthy and uh, they are looking to 
uh, get into shape with something fun like the martial arts. But they usually have great families. Maybe if you're making a ton of money, you have no relationship because you literally close yourself off from bringing somebody meaningful and significant into your life. So normally if you're going to be fighting, the way that I see it is that one of those five areas has been challenged by somebody else. Maybe it's a drunk person, maybe it's a homeless person or an annoying person or somebody who you hate at work, things like that. And it's just building and building and building and building and building until you finally forget that you're a human being and you tap into that animalistic side of you and you just go for it. You let it rip and you throw blows. And so it might be challenging your health, it might be challenging your family or your relationships or your goals, or they might be challenging your, uh, your work. And so it's important for us to remember two things. One is that we are beings and animals of the earth, and you can't change that. We are always going to find um, certain people attractive because as an animal, you know, it's built into our genes to try to mate with somebody. We're always going to be trying to uh, succeed in life by having money or providing food for ourselves, um, et cetera, et cetera. We're always going to be nurturers and caretakers of our children. We're always going to try to put them ahead of ourselves and have um, a strong family environment and connection if that's what you want to do. And we're always going to try to find emotional connection with another human being, whether gay, straight, doesn't matter. You're always going to be trying to find that connection with people. Because you're a person, like it or not, even if you like animals a lot, like I do, you're a person and you're going to connect better with other people. They're your species. That's number one. Number one, don't forget you're an animal and a being of the earth. But number two, don't forget that you're also an extremely evolved and intelligent being of the earth. And so when you're um, finding yourself getting stressed out or having stressful things happen, like maybe you are um, having problems with your relationship and you're having problems staying faithful or you're having problems with your money and you're having problems actually paying the bills or you're having problems with your family and your kids and your, um, your goals. I mean, you have no goals. You have to remember that you're a human and you have a very powerful tool as part of your human evolution and that's your brain. We have such a tool up here in our brain and it can be a double-edged sword. It can literally be something that we can use to question or give ourselves conscious choice of those animalistic genetic tendencies that I just mentioned. So for instance, when you see somebody that you're attracted to, we always make a choice. What do we do? Do we get embarrassed and walk away from that person? Do we um, have to go talk to that person? You know, an animal might just jump up, chase that person down and try to tackle them. But human beings have a conscious choice to handle the situation in a way that we deem appropriate with respect or with overwhelm or with stress or with shyness. We have the uh, ability to choose with goals. We don't, the animals, maybe their goal of the day is just to survive and not to get eaten by something. And if somebody else comes to eat them, they run, they take off like a rabbit taken off from a coyote. But we have a choice, you know, we can choose. Let's put ourselves in a position where I'm not going to have to run for my life today. And I can actually instead think about what are the goals I want to do. I want to go and go to Yosemite National Park and do a week-long hike and camp and see if I can survive in the wild for a week on my own. That'd be great. Or maybe you want to go on an epic skiing trip up north, like my favorite place is Whistler and Blackcomb, British Columbia. I was born in British Columbia and I grew up on that mountain and it's just incredible skiing. That might be a goal of mine this year is to this fall and winter, go back to Whistler and do a skiing trip. Maybe it's gonna be just to stay in town and my goal is gonna to be to gain five pounds of muscle and lose five pounds of fat, you know, something like that. That's a human evolutionary trait, I believe. You know, the ability to take the animalistic nature that's calling to us constantly and question it. And so let's say that you are about to get in a fight it's difficult, it's one of the hardest things in the world to think during a situation that might call on you to fight. Because what happens is that when you get stressed out at the prospect of potentially fighting and potentially killing or being killed by another human being, 
you release chemicals into your blood, you release stress into your brain, your body changes, your smell changes, your mind changes, your, your mental processes change, everything about you changes to amp you up and soup you up for that ensuing fight. Your body's trying to get you to go, all right, it's go time, let's pump you up big time and get you in a state where you're at least gonna give this fight your most um, valiant effort. But if you have the human ability to detach yourself from those animalistic traits right in the moment and think rationally, do I really want to use this physical state I'm being turned into to fight? Or do I want to use this physical state I'm being turned into to walk away and maybe take a little bit of embarrassment? But embarrassment compared to who? You know, that's all perspective. That's all relative to whoever's judging what's embarrassing. I think that I'm so busy. I have so many things going in my life right now from teaching people and companies to teach people online to um, giving you guys the greatest DVDs we can with our Iron Bone DVD and our Young Tai Chi DVD and also um, trying to socialize with friends and make connections in business so that I can create a really good network of people that are around me uh, to help support each other. Trying to find time to donate to nonprofit organizations or charity organizations that are helping people, animals, and the planet. Uh, working on my body and trying to stay as healthy as I can. You know, working on goals I have. Goals such as, you know, next weekend I'm going to go for on a 30 mile three day hike of which 15 miles of the 30 miles is in water where you have to swim for quite a long distance for 30 different stretches. It's, it's one of my goals. I do this hike every summer and it's so important for me to do this hike. I don't have time to fight. When do I have time to fight somebody? If you come to my house, break into my house, we're gonna fight. But if we're on the street and you're insulting me, I have no time to lower myself down to your level and fight you. I'm too busy. I've got a lot of cool things going on and not one of them is to prove myself by fighting you. I'd rather fight my black belts or a black belt of a different martial arts self-defense fighting system the next day than fight you today. Because I know that when I fight a black belt, we'll have respect toward each other. We'll have control. We will grow as a fighter with each other. If I have to fight you on the street, I punch you in the face and cut you up. You know, I can get sued for your medical bills and then some. I can get thrown in jail. I can get cut and get a disease that you're carrying. I could potentially hurt you and maim you or kill you and that would weigh on my conscience the rest of my life. You know, maybe in 20 years from now, I would change up and I might feel guilty for how I treated you with my hands and my fists. You know, so many negative scenarios that come out of fighting. And I'll finish with this. My favorite martial art movie of all time is The Karate Kid. And I think it's the greatest gift that the martial arts has. You know, that movie, it seems so corny and kind of socially um, kind of cheesy to talk about The Karate Kid. Not the new one. The old one with Mr. Miyagi. That movie is so well written. It's so well written. It's so well directed. The fight choreography is so well done. The choreographer on the movie set, you know, did such a good job of separating the Cobra Kai guys from Daniel and Miyagi and really helping them to embody the emotional state behind their uh, martial arts as well as their techniques. But you think about in that movie, who's the most beloved character and the one that we all love and the one that we all want to find somebody who's like? Well, it's Mr. Miyagi. Mr. Miyagi is the one that we all want to find. He's the, martial, he's the dream martial art instructor. You know, if you can find Pat Morita, you've got it. You've got the greatest martial art teacher there ever was. And not once in any of the Karate Kids, I've never seen Mr. Miyagi in the Karate Kid sparring his fellow students just for practice. Ever. Mr. Miyagi never threw on gloves and did a round of sparring. Never practiced techniques on somebody else. Mr. Miyagi was into bonsai. <laughs> he was a fix it up guy. He was a, you know, the janitor of the apartment. He was the handyman. He was into kata or talu. He was into meditation on the pillow and breathing 
and spirituality. He was into fishing. Even though I don't support the killing of fish, you know, I used to be quite a fisherman and I used to love that. And I think that he is the perfect example of the highest level of martial arts. Because if you watch the first Karate Kid, the time you see Mr. Miyagi fight is when Daniel is being nearly killed by the Cobra Kai's dressed in skeletons at the Halloween dance. And Miyagi jumps over and kicks ass. Because he's defending a human being from possible death. And that's the time to fight, is when your life is potentially in danger or someone else's life is in danger. But it takes an experienced human being, it takes a compassionate human being, and it takes a highly skilled human being to see without filters, with true clarity, when a situation of impending death is truly present. Does that make sense? Because most of the time we fight thinking that we're doing something just and that we're actually defending ourselves or our, our quote-unquote honor. But in reality, we're being a complete thug and we're alienating everything the martial arts stands for, especially traditional martial arts. So if you're interested in MMA and UFC and boxing and fighting in the cage or the ring, you know that might be one of your goals is to become a competitive sportsman, but that's what you are, a sportsman. If you're looking to do traditional martial arts as a way to cultivate a higher level of humanity, then fighting is the last thing that you ever should do. I hope you guys liked this episode today and please hit the like button for me. And again, like I said, in the comments down below, let me know when you think it's okay to fight and if you agree with uh, my thoughts here in today's Fighting Friday uh, video blog. And I will see you guys tomorrow for an incredible, incredible, one of a kind, Hall of Fame weekend weapon. We're gonna be pulling out a really awesome weapon for tomorrow, so tune in. I hope to see you guys then, and have a great week. Train hard, don't get into fights. Have other things you're living for besides fighting and besides ego that adhere to one of the five areas. Family, relationships, goals, money or means to support yourself, and health of the body. And uh, this is Jake May signing off. I'll see you guys next time.